Hi there, it's Jenna from ScribblingGrace.com. Today I'm doing a Bible Journaling with Me tutorial on painting a watercolor monstera leaf. Um, so this one is um, actually inspired by my son because his first birthday is tomorrow, um, March 29th. <laughs> and so we were going to have a big party and it was going to be this safari wild one theme and we had all these monstera leaf decorations. Um, but of course, with the coronavirus, we had to cancel the party. And so um, I still wanted to kind of commemorate <laughs> his first birthday party um, that would have been <laughs> in my Bible. So I decided to paint a monstera leaf. So um, I am using this little printable that I created that you can get for free at the um, blog post that goes along this video at scribblinggrace.com slash watercolor monstera. And I will put that link in the description below so you can find that and go and get this little printable that I'm using. So. Um, um, I just cut off the one side of my printable page so that my uh, monstera leaf would sit where I want it to sit. And instead of just doing the whole leaf on my page, I just decided to do um, kind of cut off the edges of it and still do a large portion of this leaf. And then I'm going to do another little one up at the top um, corner there too. So. Um, I am just using a small round paintbrush and I'm using some green colors from my Kiritake Kansatambi watercolor set. I picked out four green colors, so um, I will try to find those names of each color that I'm using and I'll put that in the blog post. Um, there's my hair, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but I'll put those uh, the color names in the blog post um, along with all the other supplies that I'm using. And um, I'm just using the dark three colors right now to paint the bulk of my monstera leaf. So I'm going to be doing two layers. Um, and uh, so this is just my first layer. And I'm just trying to kind of get the color down and get the shape down. Um, it's a little bit easier than having to uh, do it all in one go. So um, doing two layers is always uh, can always be a little bit easier and uh it doesn't have to be perfect that first time either. So I'm just kind of switching out between my three dark green colors here. Um, and not really with any rhyme or reason to it. I just like if I haven't used the lightest green, I'll use that. If I haven't used the darkest green in a little while, I'll use that one. And I'll just kind of paint like one of the leaf parts of it. Um, one of the little prawns, I guess, of the leaf. Uh, a different color and then I'm trying to kind of blend them together a little bit. Um, when I do my second layer, it's going to blend a much better and much nicer. The first layer is just kind of to get that um, base color down and kind of give me a little bit of a guide. And you can see now I just cut up my printable so that I would be able to place it under my page again um, where I wanted it to go. And now I'm just going to paint um, this part of this leaf as well in the same technique, just kind of switching between those three dark colors. And there's no really a technique to actually coloring it in. I'm just taking a small round paintbrush to color it in, basically. You could totally do this easily with um, colored pencils as well or watercolor pencils if that's something that you'd like to try. And I'm drying my um, leaves now, drying that first layer. Um, and now I'm just replacing a piece of paper underneath to protect the pages below my Bible. And I'm going to start um, doing that second layer as soon as these leaves are dry. Um, one thing to note is that with my watercolor set, I'm using that Kiritake Gansai Tambi watercolor set and it has, I have the 48 color set. So there's a lot of already pre-mixed colors, which is great and I love it. Um, highly recommend it for Bible journaling. But if you don't have that set or, um, you only have like one green color, you can totally mix a few different colors together. Just add in maybe a little yellow or a little bit of brown to create different tones of that green color that you do have. Um, and you also could totally do this with just one color. You don't need to do um, multiple tones or multiple colors of green either. Um, so now I'm doing, for the second layer, I'm doing a little bit more of a wet on wet technique. The wet on wet technique is a really, um, super common technique for Bible journaling. Um, it's basically just where you wet the page first and then you add in your color on top of that water so it'll blend together and, um, and creates a really cool effect. 
with Bible journaling, it's really hard to do the wet on wet technique because the pages are so thin and they don't have the toothiness of a watercolor paper that makes the wet on wet technique really shine. So I'm kind of doing a pseudo wet on wet technique. I'm adding a little bit of water down with a clean paintbrush and then I'm taking my um, paint color and adding it in. But it's not, I'm not adding a huge ton of water. The more water that you add, the more your page is going to crinkle and things like that. And you're going to get little pools. So you'll see me dab up with my um, Q-tip some of those pools of watercolor that happen. So um, <laughs> the normal wet on wet technique, you just kind of like would wet your paper, paper all up and add in the color and it'll smear all into those that water and create a really cool wash. But for this, we're just kind of trying to get those colors to blend a little bit better. And so placing that water, just a small bit of water down before adding the color can just help the colors to blend a little bit better. So that's the whole point. And you can see that it is blending so much better than my first layer um, where I just kind of hit haphazardly added the color straight onto the paper. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind, but of course, <laughs> you don't really even have to uh, do what I'm doing. I would encourage you to have fun with it. If you are confident with watercolor, um, go for it. If you're not confident with watercolor, still go for it because the beauty of watercolor is that really anything that you do, it's still going to turn out really pretty. So um, I find that watercolor is so um, forgiving. So. Um, Again, I'm just still, I'm doing the same thing as my first layer where I'm just taking random colors and trying to blend them together a little bit, but you can see the different tones of my leaf. Um, all right. <laughs> so while I am still painting that, I will um, just tell you a little bit about the verse that I'm working on. I'm working on Psalm 77 verses 11 through 12, which says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all of your mighty deeds. Um, I really was drawn to Psalm 77 because in the beginning um, few verses of Psalm 77, the psalmist is just uh, like so distraught and asking for the Lord for help and he's not getting it and he feels like the Lord has left him. And then he turns it around and he says, you know what, I'm going to remember the deeds that the Lord has done and the good things that he has done and the Lord is good. And um, so I was just so drawn to that, especially in this time with the coronavirus and things just feel so up in the air and scary and um, it kind of is like, come on, God. <laughs> so I just thought um, that this psalm was just a really one, good one to journal right now. Um, you know, we can still praise him and we can still rejoice in the good things that he does because he still is good and he always is good. And uh, so let's still just continue to praise the Lord through this tough time. Um, even though it may feel like he's not around, he is here and he is always with us. Um, so <laughs> with that, <laughs> Back to my painting. Um, again, I'm just finishing up this second leaf, doing that second coat. Um, another thing to note, because um, I always get asked, is that yes, I did go over some of the scripture on this page. Um, that's something that I personally don't mind if I can't read every single word, but the beauty of watercolor is that I can, if you keep the colors pr fairly light, um, you can still read all the text. So for this page, even though that, um, it is kind of a dark green color, I still can read all of the text on the page. Um, but if you do not want, <laughs> um, to cover up the scripture at all, you could totally do this as a tip in. You could just use that printable and cut it out, um, to fit your page and just paint the printable in directly. Um, you can paint it on a separate sheet of paper and then tip it into your Bible. You can do this in a sketchbook rather than your Bible. Um, and there's also the ESV interleave journaling Bible that has full blank pages as well. So if you're interested um, in a Bible with full blank pages where you don't have to worry about ever covering up the scripture, that's a great Bible to look into. Um, one of my favorites. So that's just something to keep in mind. So now I am adding the um, stem of my leaf. So when you look at monstera leaves, most of them have bright green stems, um, which 
you could paint the stem first and then um, you'd have more of a bright green color but I just decided to go over my leaf that I already finished with the bright green um, so you have to make sure that your green because it's a light color going on dark it's hard to see um, but it is there and I really liked the effect of it but you have to make sure that it is uh, very pigmented so you want to use as little amount of water as possible to get that paint on your paper and transfer it to the page um, and just pick up a ton of that pigment rather than having uh, much water in it. And then I'll give you a nice, uh, very strong color. And it'll help to make that stand out on top of the darker green color. Um, you also could totally do a dark stem as well. So <laughs> have fun with it and do your thing. And now I'm just drying it again with my heat gun. You totally could let this air dry, but I do love my heat gun. It dries things super fast. And now I'm just taking a stiff, um, flat paintbrush, and I'm just going to pick up a ton of that dark or lime green um, color. And I'm just going to use my finger to create splatters around my page. That just kind of helps to give a little finishing touch. I also added a little bit of brown splatter as well. Um, and once I'm done with that, I'm going to dry it again, and then I'm going to go ahead and add my lettering. So I'm going to write out with pencil first. Um, I will remember the deeds of your of the Lord. I will remember the deeds of the Lord, and I will consider all your works. Um, again, the verse I'm working on is Psalm 77, verses 11 through 12, which says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. And then I'm going to take my Tombow Funosuke brush pen and I'm just writing out my lettering. And I kept it, um, this lettering super simple this time. Normally I like to do kind of a calligraphy, but this time I'm just doing a simple sans serif um, lettering. Just all capitals um, with my Tombow Funosuke. So I am doing kind of a um, sans serif that has a little calligraphy element to it, I guess, um, where I'm doing the thick downstrokes. Um, but it's just super simple, and I do have tutorials on lettering, um, brush pen calligraphy, and I also have a uh, tutorial on 10 easy hand lettering styles that has a little cheat sheet, and this style is one that's on that cheat sheet. So um, I'll put all those links to um, those good blog posts that you can learn more stuff from. Again, the link to the free printable and the supplies that I'm using and all the fun stuff that you need to create a page just like this one in the blog post goes along with this video at scribblinggrace.com slash watercolormonstera and I'll put that link in the description below. So now I decided that I wanted to add a tiny bit more detail to my flower and so I just took a white um, watercolor paint and just added a little bit of detail to the stems and I just took the very tip of my small paintbrush and just kind of dragged it along the stem and just kind of haphazard spots um, not perfect but it does add a little bit of highlight and helps um, that stem to stand out a little bit more and that's it for my page <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and uh, here's a look at the back side I did get a little bit of bleed through that came over the edge of the page um, at the top but that's not a biggie once I um, do something else on the other side of the page, you'll never notice that that was ever there. Um, and none of the other supplies bled through. There's a little ghosting from the pen, which is totally normal. That's just a little shadow, um, but no actual bleed through. So that's it. All right, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.